Uh, I just wanted to talk about the beard for a minute because it's quite something. And how long did it take you to grow it, first of all? It was uh, uh, six months, and then I, I think I had it for an additional year after that. Mm -hmm. and, and how did <laughs> people treat you? Me. No, that's a, that's no, that's not what it was during the movie, right? That's cleaned no, that up. No, that was that was it. Oh, that really? Was, well, yeah. then it didn't look like that in the movie. It, it maybe it's because there was so much ice on it too, because it was always frozen. That was actually wax. She I had a, a fantastic makeup artist in this movie who did all the stuff from the bear mauling, and there was wax that she dribbled all over my face every day. It was about a four to five hour makeup job every day with all the scars and. So, so again, it was just but, a joy. Yes. The whole experience. <laughs> but now, see, you, you're growing it back again, or something. Are you just going to keep it at that level? A light stubble. I'm a light stubble. A light stubble. Yeah. Do you do you like wearing? I don't think I'll ever have a beard like that ever again, unless it's for a, a role. But yeah, it's it's hard to maintain. It's just it stuff gets in there. You know, <laughs> you're eating, and then food falls in. You're... Right. And you have to shampoo it, right? You have to shampoo it, yeah. And do you put conditioner in it? I did. Because you'd put want it to be soft. You do want it to be soft, otherwise right. it gets like a Brillo pad. And can you? <laughs> yes. And who wants to feel that? Who and so that? when you when you have food in it, can you tell? Oh, it's, it's very visible. Yeah. It's I mean, no, visible. but if you don't have a mirror, sometimes do you feel like you've walked around and there's been food in your beard? <laughs> Well, if you have good enough friends, they notify you if you have mustard on your beard or something like right. that. They let you know. All right. Just checking. So you, you've always been like a daredevil, but um, you've done, I think I've talked to you about, you swim with sharks, or you have. Yeah. And you jump out, out, out of an airplane. Yeah. On a regular basis, or will you? I only did that once. once. Will you do it again? When, you're, when both parachutes don't open, you tend to not go repeat something like that. Yeah. What are you talking about? Well, then how'd you get down? I had, <laughs> I jumped out of the airplane, and then my first chute didn't open. They cut, it's tandem, so somebody's on your back. They cut that line. We started free falling towards Earth, and that's when you get the, you know, eight by 10 glossies of your whole life flashing before your eyes. <laughs> and then the second one was tangled as well, and I saw my friends sort of popping off with their, you know, their parachutes, and I'm still plummeting towards planet Earth. And and then that was tangled for about a good, I don't know, 20, 30 seconds. And then he untangled it. And then he told me, oh, you're probably going to break your legs now because this, we're going too fast. So it was one of the worst experiences of my life, and I'll never do it again. And did you break your legs? I did not break my legs. Wow. So he's whispering in your ear, or yelling in your ear. He was screaming. In, screaming in your ear. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to break your legs. You're going to break your legs. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> I can't hear you. <laughs> Wow, that's just horrible. So what's the scariest thing you've ever done? I was on a plane to Russia, and the engine exploded. I was looking out the window, and the entire engine just turned into a fireball. It was right after Sully had that incident happen to him where the geese flew into right. both engines. Right, and he landed on the yeah. river. This happened in, in one of the engines, and I was the, was, I was the only person there that seemed to see this, but it was a flaming fireball, and it was all Russian um, passengers. and. I kind of felt like I'd already died and gone to heaven because no one said anything. <laughs> and I was screaming at the top of my lungs, saying, what the hell is going on here? And these people just kind of looked back to me, and the, and the stewardess came out and said, we seem to have a, a slight problem here. <laughs> and the Russian guy finally said, what is the problem? And he said, well, we, we lost one of our engines. <laughs> And he, said, <laughs> he goes, how many engines did we have? <laughs> goes, well, we had two. <laughs> now we have one. <laughs> and uh, we proceeded to say, that is not, that is not good. That is not good. <laughs> and we basically dumped fuel for 45 minutes and did an emergency landing, and all our tires exploded. And there was 100 different ambulances there, and it was on CNN. And, that was another bummer. Wow. Oh, my God. It, that's incredible. I feel like I should write a book now. Yeah, well, no, I'm going to write it. <laughs>